Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. The storyline of Cold War Zombies is a weird one because it is a new story in theory, but it's built on the shoulders of the old Ether story. And it's called the Dark Ether story now, but the Dark Ether was present before. Like, it's not like the Dark Ether is anything new by any means. We heard about the Dark Ether in the Ether story. We learned about its origins and who inhabited it and where it was, etc. What this means is that there are kind of going to be two types of story videos that I'm going to be making on my channel this year. One are going to be things like all of new characters, new things in this new world that don't have bearing and relevance with that previous story, or at least not directly. And the other types of videos are going to be things that do have callbacks, do have tiebacks, things like Samantha, right? You can't talk about Samantha without talking about her history as a child going through all those crazy maps that she went through back in the regular Ether story. And the reason I bring this up now, just before I get into the video, is that I've already made videos about Orlov and Peck and Valentina and the kind of new story, but I haven't gone too far towards the old old stuff just yet, and so I guess this is a marker to say that your boy Mr. Ruffle Waffles is back, and it's time, at last, to talk about some classic material. Time and time again, in my comment section over the past couple of weeks, I have seen people saying, Milo, do you think Nikolai is the announcer in Cold War Zombies? And I love it when you guys send me theories. I absolutely love taking those ideas, seeing if I can find any truth to them, poking holes in them, and making videos about them. And so I want to say thank you to the vast number of people that suggested I make this video. I think it's definitely a question that the community has had on its mind as a whole. And so today I'm going to give you some reasons why it could be Nikolai and some reasons why it can't be Nikolai. And from that, you should be able to make your own opinion about what exactly is going on. And I'll give you my opinion too. I also want to quickly remind you that if you do have any other burning questions about the story right now that you think like you and your friends all really want answered, drop them in the comments down below and you never know. Next week, I might make a video about that exact topic and give you a little shout out. With all that out of the way, sorry that took a little while. Let's play, first of all, the actual and that's the quotes themselves. Fetch me their souls. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Bonus points. Carpenter. Double points. Fire sale. Insta kill. Max ammo. Kaboom. Alongside all of those regular ones, there are actually a couple of extras this year that are in Onslaught. So for example, in Onslaught, when you get a full power or you get a random perk, the announcer will pipe up and I'll play those for you now. Emo mod. Full power. Random perk. So first impressions, hearing the voice, I'm going to say the obvious here, he's Russian. Nikolai's Russian. That's a good start. Also, I 100% think, without any doubt in my mind at least, that this is the voice actor that plays Nikolai called Fred Tatashori. I don't think that there's any other voice actor that this could possibly be. It just sounds like him. So straight away, that puts us in great territory for this to indeed be actually Nikolai. But let's not go too far too fast. What you may not already know is that Fred Tatashori actually also played the High Priest of Chaos in Black Ops 4, and if you go back to a map like Origins, for instance, or just look at Black Ops 3 Zombies, Fred voiced Maxis as well. Like, this guy does more than one voice in Zombies. He isn't just Nikolai, and so it doesn't just by default mean that he must be Nikolai as the announcer because he's the one doing the voice acting. Let's think about whether it would make sense for Nikolai to be here in the story. The last time we saw Nikolai alive was in the ending of Targda Totem. The crew had come a long way on their journey through all all of the games leading up to that point, and then tragically, but necessarily, in the end cutscene, we saw Nikolai die. Here's a quick refresher. As we leave this life behind, it is my hope that you know one thing beyond any doubt. Look away, Eddie. This might at face value make it seem like, well, okay, he can't be in this new universe because he's dead just like the rest of Premise and Ultimus are all dead. And as such, he doesn't exist anymore. Like he physically just is not even a thing. But there are arguments you can make to kind of counteract this if you so wanted. One of which is that we don't actually see him die. Samantha shoots, but the bullet going into his cranium is not on screen. That is not something that is displayed. And as such, what if Samantha did fire the gun and it did hit him? 
him, but it wasn't a mortal wound. Sam was only a child at this point, remember, after all, and so the fact that she was tasked with this huge amount of responsibility to take down this man and kill him once and for all, totally cleansing a universe of his existence, is pretty mind-blowing in my opinion. And we all assume that she did it successfully because it's Samantha, I mean, she wouldn't fail us, right? But what if she messed up somehow? If we run with this as an idea for just a second, what could have happened is she could have shot him, it could have seemed like he was going to die, and so Samantha and Eddie would have turned around, done a 180, and walked off into that new universe, but he could have then been left to fester in the knowledge that he failed. He had this grand plan. He killed all his friends, in fact, to try and execute this strategy that he had come up with to actually save everyone. And he messed it up. He handed the pistol over to Samantha and she didn't do the job she needed to because she was just a kid. How was she going to know? You think that she was going to stand over his body and shoot a couple of extra rounds into his brain to make sure he was gone? No, she would have been traumatized by the whole thing. And so what if Nikolai was left lying there in extreme amounts of pain, no doubt, but not removed from existence entirely and forced to live with the fact that he had just failed. It was the living on of Primus and Ultimus that caused the Dark Aether to spread so much across the multiverse. This was an established fact that we really came to terms with towards the end of Black Ops 4, and the fact that he might have not perished in as complete a manner as we've all assumed could absolutely be the reason why the Dark Aether is still even present in Cold War Zombies today. We knew that there would probably be zombies at some point, and Exo Element 1 seems to just be another name for 115, but but we sort of expected it to be a bit different. Like the fact that there is an announcer in the first place makes it really feel like that old universe has kind of still got its tendrils around something. And one theory for that is that it's just because Samantha and Eddie lived through it. And so to some extent, they have preserved the memory of that old story and brought it through into this new universe. But another idea is just that Nikolai didn't die. And so that stuff is still there. Maybe while Nikolai was there in the forest, just waiting for that sweet release of death that would never come, the Dark Aether got to him somehow. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the amount of pain that he was experiencing as well, and also the fact that he had no one to finish him off, would have probably made the Dark Aether's job a little bit easier. And the fact that he even gives Samantha the gun to do this in the first place is really interesting to me. It's almost like the characters can't inflict that final killing blow themselves. It has to be someone else. And as such, Samantha and Eddie are the only remaining options for who could kill Nikolai when the rest of the crew are dead. But then once Samantha and Eddie leave, if Nikolai's still alive, alive, who's going to take him out? There's no one left to administer the killing blow that he needs, and if he can't do it himself, then he's just going to be trapped, and the Dark Aether is going to seep into his brain, and bad things are going to happen. So, in my opinion, that hypothetical scenario where the gunshot doesn't kill him provides us with a really compelling idea of kind of an origin story for the villain arc of Nikolai. There is a lot more to consider, though, and it would be foolish, I think, for us to just run with that one hypothetical and not consider some other options, too. It is a completely valid argument to say that it's unlikely Treyarch would pull a move like that where the bullet didn't kill him because of the emotional whiplash that would cause us as a player base. They'd been building up to that ending for such a long time, and in a lot of ways, I think a lot of the community basically wants those characters to just have some time off. Like, let them be the characters that we all loved in Ether, but let some new characters flourish in the Dark Ether story now. And I think it's totally fair to say that you think Treyarch also feels that way and wouldn't want to just just pull in another character from the past once again and constantly have it being those same old characters it's always been. That's why in the ending of Tagda Toten, we hear about what the characters want for their new lives, which they'll never get tragically because they're dead, but they get their hopes and their dreams expounded on and we get to hear a little bit about the people behind the brave soldiers facades of Ultimus and Primus. We get to hear about them as human beings. And if they did all of that and then Treyarch were like, uh, the uh, bullet didn't kill him, gotcha. <laughs> That could potentially feel so just terrible for us as players. It would take so much of the emotional impact out of that ending, and I don't know, it would just feel like a bait and switch. And I do think that is a valid argument against the hypothetical that I just proposed as to why that might not be the case at all. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the comments down below there are quite a lot of people that are having debates back and forth about which would be better and which they'd like to see. I mean, some people I'm sure would love to see those old Ether characters return because they were iconic, they were so much fun, we loved them, and a new entire lease on life for Nikolai 
as a new announcer bad guy villain wouldn't be just the same old Nikolai we've always seen. It would be something new. But then on the other hand, there are going to be those people that just want Ether stuff to be out of the picture. And I mean, it's not because, like I said, Samantha is back, so it's just not going to be completely gone, but they at least want as little Ether in there as possible. There is still more stuff to consider here, though, so don't form your opinion too concretely just yet. Let's get a little bit more evidence into the mix. One person I've seen mentioned a fair bit as a potential alternative to who the announcer is, is the Shadow Man. Now, this is a weird one because it obviously doesn't sound like the Shadow Man. The dude is Russian. Like, this new announcer is Russian. You can't argue with that. But people have been saying, what if the fused version of Monty and the Shadow Man is a new kind of Russian dude? And I don't think that's actually possible in the first place. I don't think it's possible for Monty and the Shadow Man to have fused. I don't know exactly where that's coming from, that idea, but here's why I think it's wrong, right? The Shadow Man got blown up. And what I mean by that is that the fool was inside the summoning key when it literally got shattered by the Agathan device in the tag ending, right here. The guy was captured in shadows, brought forward to Dar Aizen with Dempsey, brought forward again to Zetsubo with Takio, and those three souls were all in the key at the point where the Black Ops 4 deviant arc of the story began. They never went on to Grod Krovi to get Nikolai's innocent soul, they went on this new path, and it therefore holds, I think, that the Shadow Man is no more based on the fact that the key itself is destroyed while he's in it, and that is also the erasure, by the way, of Dempsey and Takio's innocent souls. That detail will be relevant in just a second, but quickly let's just talk about how that affects Monty. We hear from Pablo Marinus right at the end of the Ether story that Richterfun actually realizes that Dr. Monty is not inherently evil. He can't actually blame Dr. Monty for the way he acts. He says that he's just like you and me. He just wants to survive. And then Richterfun specifies that Monty and the Shadow Man were both corrupted by the Dark Ether, one by his own ambition, and the other death desperately trying to save his friend. Thus, if the Shadow Man is gone and Monty isn't inherently evil, there is no reason why he would suddenly turn into a Russian dude and become the announcer and actively try and, like, take over the world. That has never been Monty's MO. He's just wanted to try and save everything, save existence itself. And that just doesn't line up with the new motivations of the forces in the Dark Ether that we learn about in Cold War Zombies and in D-Machine. The Megaton, for instance, says one land one army, one mission. What is coming cannot be stopped. Our people, our time, your land are beckoning. We are not the last. We are not the end. You've disturbed my rest, but now your time is over. This world will be ours. We will rebuild it. And to me, I mean, that sounds like Russian rhetoric, basically. It does not sound like, oh, ho, ho, Max, Dr. Monty, close the windows. No, none of that at all. It's so far from it. And so I just wanted to basically shut that theory down. Maybe I'm wrong, but for now, I think our focus should be elsewhere. I mentioned that Takio and Dempsey's souls might be relevant, having been destroyed in the summoning key as well. With those two innocent souls gone, we've got to consider Richterfun's and Nikolai's. Richterfun's innocent soul is the kid that we literally see walk into the portal in the tag ending, so he's kind of accounted for. The other innocent soul, Nikolai's, is just unaccounted for. As far as I can tell, at least, maybe I'm forgetting something. It has been a while, but I think he's just left out there. He's not sucked into the summoning key. He's left in the universe. And that would presumably mean that there's kind of an unaccounted for party in this plan. And we don't know what the implications of that are. Could this be the key to everything? Because think about it. If Samantha's innocent soul ended up in control of the zombies, and that was the entire reason why Samantha was so important in the early days of the story, right? If that was a big thing there, if Nikolai's innocent soul got left in the dark ether when that entire multiverse collapsed down, was kind of forced beneath the creation where it started out to banish the Apothecons, with him in there, what if he became evil, became twisted and corrupted, and that is what catapulted him into power over the dark ether, which is exactly why he is then the announcer in Cold War? Do you not think that makes sense? Because to me, that feels like a perfect fit. His innocent soul remaining in the dark ether, meaning that he would then gain power over it and gain control. This, however, assumes that Nikolai has kind of already made it into the dark ether without any kind of need for things to happen in this new universe. Like, he's already a dark force in there. And I'd like to quickly present an alternative viewpoint for how things might have come to be and maybe another reason why it might not actually be him. A mega group are the new bad guys in Cold War Zombies. They're a KGB Spetsnaz operation that are responsible for restarting 
starting the cyclotron and opening the dimensional rift into the dark ether that the Germans were originally responsible for when they created the cyclotron as part of Project End Station in 1944. It would feel weird to me if Nikolai was like calling out to them in the same way that Samantha would call out to people from the dark ether or from the ether rather and trying to get them to like reopen the portal so that he could get free and he could get out. Like it feels almost too personal to me. Granted, if he was being the conduit for the dark ether's wishes, then that could make sense. But it would kind of make more sense to me for it to have been a Russian that was already present in this new universe to have then gained power and gained control by doing something as part of the Omega Group research. And that would make it much less likely to be Nikolai himself that had gained that control. It would just be some kind of new generic Russian scientist that we might not have actually met yet. This one really could go either way. I mean, if Nikolai is in control, but sort of not actually in control, like if the Dark Ether had saved him and he was now just sort of being a spokesperson for it, then it could absolutely still work that it could be him. It's just kind of a question of how you prefer to view it. And I think in summary, that actually goes for a lot of this stuff. Like your personal feeling for whether or not you want to see any of that old Ether story stuff return is probably going to bias your opinion as to what you think is most likely with the evidence that I've provided today. And that's awesome, actually, because it means that we're going to have such a vibrant discussion and a healthy kind of back and forth in the community, I think, in the next couple of months as we learn more about what's going on. And it'll mean that the story content that I'll be making will constantly have loads of really interesting questions about whether things are linked to the past or whether they're part of this new universe or whether it's a blend of both. I, for now, am going to make the kind of cautious guess that it's not Nikolai. That's going to be my current assumption. But I think judging by what I've said in this video, you'd be totally justified to think that it absolutely was him. And of course, as we get more information and I make more videos about this, I'll hopefully get you guys closer and closer to the truth of what exactly is going on here. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it all this way through the video, guys, comment, uh, Nikolai is fat in the comment section and make sure to subscribe as well, of course, for more zombies, videos, theories, etc., storyline, all sorts of stuff in the future from your boy, Mr. Ruffwaffles. Thanks guys. Bye for now.